Today, we are gonna make some grass. No, I'm not in Colorado, so it's not gonna be that kind of grass. It's our techniques that are so simple and sensible, your models have practically built Stir themselves. <laughs> Merv and I am on my way to do some urban investigating. Ooh, see with the whole COVID-19 thing and well, a lot of the businesses being shut down, particularly movie theaters, it kind of brings to mind the fact that, uh, well, the old drive-in movie theaters are probably pretty relevant. I know that there was one that had kind of opened up and was showing some uh, uh, some movies around here and it, it brought to, to my attention that you know, those are probably a, a really good thing because when you're in isolation, all that kind of stuff, well, you can sit in your car and, and watch a movie. So today we are going to look at some of the uh, sites where there used to be drive-in movie theaters here in Salt Lake City. Yeah, there was actually a couple right here in the city. So we're going to go look at those sites and we're going to talk a little bit about them. There's going to be four of them we're going to talk about today. Uh, there was a bunch of other drive-ins around here, but particularly those four uh, we're going to talk about today. So stick with us, and uh, Mad Dog Merv's going to take you on a trip back to the uh, good old days of drive-in movie theaters here in Salt Lake City. So for my opening picture, I thought I would mention my friend Ron Starr at Photo Star Photography. Took some of my 125th scale model cars, and I did the model of the, um, the little speakers, and he put this together on a base and put together this wonderful conglomeration photo of a drive-in movie theater, late 70s, early 80s, which was a time when I really liked going to theaters. So really the first theater, uh, drive-in movie theater in Salt Lake City was opened June 5th of 1947 called the Auditorium Drive-In and it was located on 345 West and 2100 South on the south side of the street. Later, the name was shortened to Autorium, and that's what you see here in that particular picture. The entrance was kind of on the west side of the, the lot. So here is a good picture from 1958, an overhead picture showing the Autorium uh, drive-in movie theater. 2100 South is right there at the top, and off to the right is 300 West. The theater held 500 cars, and it was owned by a man named Ray Wilmart. You can see in this particular overhead photo now that's a little bit further back, you can see the, uh, the train track just south of the, um, of the theater. You can plainly see 300 West, and at the very bottom of this photo, you can see another drive-in movie theater. Well, we'll tell you a little bit about that in just a moment. So here is a much better picture of the uh, auditorium taken during the day, or the autorium by, by, the, by this time. And here is a good picture of the screen looking to the north and the east. You can see the um, concessions building there on the right-hand side. This concessions building, here's how it looked as it was being built and then how it looked a little bit later when it was in operation. So this wasn't there for very long. Um, recently I did a site investigation and this overlooks the lot where it used to be. This particular picture being taken from Carl's Jr. which is just east of the original lot. So in this picture here, uh, 1958, you can see at the top the uh, autorium, but it looks kind of vacant, doesn't it? Down below, is uh, actually it had moved in the late uh, 1950s. It had moved to a location about 2450 uh, south and 300 west. And here is a much better picture. This one taken from 1964, where you can actually see uh, close up there the, uh, the theater, not too far from 2700 south. Ah, oh, yeah, this uh, arrow up above here points out some of the old area. As you can see, it's being developed from the old Autorium uh, Theater. Kind of, a, kind of a neat photo here, being able to see that. This picture dated from 1963 of the uh, freeway going in. On the very uh, far right at the bottom, you can see part of the Autorium uh, Drive-In Movie Theater right there. 
So uh, by then it was, uh, well, it was pretty much done and records show that it closed up in 1964. Uh, that's the last time it appeared in the newspaper. So here's the site today of the 300 West and about 2450 South. This would be the area right here where the entrance to that uh, theater was. It was a lot of fun to research this out and do the uh, uh, site investigation. So the next one we're gonna move on to is called the airport drive-in. And here it is in an aerial from 1958. You can see it right by the end of uh, runway 34, which is now runway 35. I don't know why they renumbered it, but anyway. Um, pretty cool, right off of North Temple. The address was 2711 West North Temple. It could hold 300 cars. It opened August 5th of 1947 with uh, Gary Cooper in The Plainsman. Here's a wider shot of that aerial. You can see it on the upper left-hand side there, uh, just off of North Temple. Anyway, um, it operated till uh, some reports say 1965, some say 1975. But uh, regardless, it uh, was there for a while. And you can see from this going down the freeway, taking the shot, it was, well, about where that pole is, um, just up in that area of the field up there uh, is where the uh, airport drive-in was located. This is a current view of it. Now we're going to move up to the east side of Salt Lake City. This uh, famous picture was in uh, Life magazine. Was, uh, well, some people say it was taken at the Motor View drive-in, but it was actually done at the Oak Hills drive-in, which uh, this picture here is a composite uh, they had a whole bunch of college students come to see a movie and you can see the whole nice, you know, sunset in the back. But this far into the Ten Commandments, that would have been shoot around 1130 or midnight. So the Oak Hills Drive-In on 980 Oak Hills Way was just south and east of Hogel Zoo. It was opened in 1951 with a capacity listed as 400 cars. One feature of the drive-in was the residents just south of the drive-in could pay a $50 installation fee for speakers so that they could watch movies in their home. The theater was owned by Fox Intermountain Theaters. When Oak Hills Drive-In was closed in 1965, they built the Olympus Drive-In at 5600 South and 9th East. The Oak Hills Drive-In was demolished in 65 to add on to the subdivision. So now we're gonna take a look around that neighborhood as it is today, see what, uh, see what we can see. I've kind of drawn a representation of the uh, theater there on a uh, modern map so you can kind of see where the streets are and first off we're going to go back to where the uh, uh, the back of the lot was and then we're going to take a look from the north end and then we'll look from the access road so from the back end of the lot there's what you used to see back then and now here we are at the intersection of mercedes way and, and crestview drive looking west and then number two well that would have been over there at the intersection about alton way and and uh, crestview drive and here's what you see today looking west. And then the entrance road, which was, uh, it's now called Crestview Circle and uh, the intersection of uh, Crestview Drive. And, and well, this would have been your access road into the place. So now we're gonna move a few miles south to the Motor View Drive-In on 3301 East and 3300 South. It uh, was capable of holding 700 cars when it first opened. Eric and Carl Peterson, opened the $65,000 Motor View Drive-In on June 3rd of 1947, which is just a little bit before that uh, auditorium on the west side. So this was the first one opened here in the valley. Ha ha. It operated until 1976. You can see on this overhead map its location just west of that uh, reservoir that's up there. Anyway, uh, here is a picture of the uh, screen uh, when this was built. And you can see back there that, well, there was a little living space. And this is what the uh, Petersons used for a, uh, an on-site living space, if you will, built right there at the base of the screen. Uh, kind of a nice little apartment. There was uh, kind of a storage area just east of the apartment area. Here is a floor plan of what that looked like with the uh, two bedrooms and the living room. Um, and you can see uh, some of the other storage areas. Here's some pictures 
from that time period. About 1949 is when these were taken. Pretty, uh, pretty neat to think you could actually live there at the drive-in movie theater. Anyway, um, here's another picture taken about uh, 48, 49, uh, back when there was just nothing up there. This is a great picture in the original uh, snack bar and the original uh, projection booth that was there at that time. Yeah, yeah great view from that area. I wonder what it was called the motor view. But anyway, uh, recently I went up into that area and here is that same area where the screen would have been and the, uh, the, the ticket booth area. Uh, here's how it looks today. In fact, this is about where the ticket booth uh, would have been. And this is how it looks today. And actually, when I was a young child, uh, well, that building there was there, so it was kind of blocking the view at that time as well. Looking north uh, to where these cars are in, in front of us is where the screen actually sat, the screen building actually was. And this is what things look like today in that area. Now looking south, this is kind of fun. You can see the McDonald's Playland, McDonald's there on the far left. That's where the Playland for the, um, for the Motor V drive-in was. But that, uh, that intersection there by the, fire, by the fire truck has an interesting history for me personally. You see in the uh, late 1960s, early 1970s, well, my sister was taking me to a drive-in movie and Right across at the very bottom of the screen, there's a little road that comes out. There was a light there. And as we're going across in my dad's old 1964 uh, Falcon station wagon, the back door flew open as we're driving across that intersection. And I dang near fell out right in the middle of 3300 South. Fortunately, my other sister reached over and grabbed me and pulled me in. This picture is from actually 1970, so about that time frame. Anyway, at the end of the 1953 season, the Petersons went large, converting to a 102 by 48 foot wide CinemaScope compatible screen, starting back up on March 19th of 1954 with the Robe. Sound was uh, stereo, using two uh, Modiograph in-car stereophonic speakers, and they expanded the lot to 900 cars. This overhead, taken in 1958, you can see that they were going to build a second theater to the west, although screen was never put in place, and well, they started selling off the property, but pretty pretty cool overhead picture. And here's a close up of the Playland uh, in 1958. Now, uh, back on April 17th of 1949, a $13,000 playground featuring a $4,000 miniature train uh, that would carry up to 16 pas passengers and a swing uh, slide, teeter-totter, and picnic ground uh, was opened. And, well, that uh, was open from 7 p.m. till 9 p.m. every night. Here is a uh, newspaper ad from that period of time, including the Oak Hills, which is pretty cool. Anyway, things are a little different here. In 1961, a new snack bar was built, and you can see that it's just a little bit different than in that other picture. Here's an overhead shot from uh, April of 1964. How about that? About the time I was hatched. In fact, like a week before I was hatched. And you can see that there's a, uh, they had built a little play area there just in front of the screen that they used for a short period of time. But uh, let's focus on the uh, changes that have happened here in the play area that uh, you see in the 1958 picture, shall we? So the details are, there's a merry-go-round uh, the boat ride. You can see where the train track is and the train station and the water tower. There were monkey cages and a pony ride. Uh, there were some other things as well, but not exactly sure what they all were or where exactly they were located. But it was a fun place from everybody that I've heard and that uh, went there back in the day. I remember when I was little one time we went there and my sister took me over to the swings and and whatnot. We didn't spend a whole lot of time and we didn't go on the train ride, unfortunately. But anyway, this is a great overhead view of that. Sure wish we had uh, something like that again. But anyway, um, so as you all know, I'm trying to replicate something similar to this on my, uh, on my train table, uh, my shelf layout that I have uh, in the dog house. And recently I acquired the Walther's, it's called the Skyview Drive-In. And uh, well, 
watch the uh, kit hoarder stash, you'll see the build that I did of, of this. So thanks for joining us. We'll see you for part two soon.